A short jog brings me back to her house and I take a seat within the bus stop on the street opposite her, staking out her father. I ponder if he's already gone, perhaps, and I missed him leaving. Maybe he's still dealing with business. After a few minutes, however, I'm proven wrong by the sound of an engine revving up and a new, expensive-looking performance car emerging from the driveway of Natsuki's house. It speeds away around the corner within seconds, and once I'm certain that he's gone, I move over to Natsuki's house and ring the doorbell. I wait. Nothing. I press, it do I press down on it again. Once more. No answer. Growing ever anxious, I knock on the door heavily, aggressively banging my bald ball fist into the door. A moment of silence. Then from a second floor window, I see curtain pull back. A flash of pink, and just as quickly, it, it, it replaced, it's replaced once more. I watch it intensely, waiting for any sign of movement until I hear the sound of the door chain being unhinged, and the dead ball turning. My heart is ready to jump out of my chest. I don't know what I'll be greeted by, but I await it nervously. Lopsa, what the hell are you doing here? It's Natsuki. Thank God. Natsuki, are you alright? What happened to your process? What process? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> She's playing dumb, even though I saw her. What could have happened to her, for her to be so devoted to keeping it a secret? Before I can reply, she grabs me by my collar, by the collar of my shirt, and yanks me into her voyeur. Hey, how how do you know I where I live? Now's not the time for that. Has she been drinking? Better question is, where have you been? I haven't been feeling very good the past few days. No need to be so mean about it. Does she expect me to believe that after what I saw? Not so good. I know something's wrong. I saw you at the hospital, remember? Oh, that? She giggles. That was nothing. Don't worry about about that, okay? There's much worse to be worried about. What do you mean? Come with me. I could do with another class anyway. She grips my arm loosely and tries to move me along with her through her house. As she moves, she begins erratically wobbling, as though she's having trouble walking. She holds tighter onto my arm for support. She stumbles and nearly trips. I catch her wrapping my arm around her chest and pulling her upright. <laughs> Thanks. That's not like her. Normally if I grabbed her for whatever reason, she'd freak out and call me gross or something of that sort. But here she didn't even flinch or say anything about it. Something feels off. I release my grip on her reluctantly as she is still st she's still staggering her way along. I, s I assist in moving her now up the stairs, making sure she doesn't fall and knock, uh, knock us both back onto the steps. We finally make it up the stairs and Natsuki guides me to her room. Well, that's a light. That's some bright light there. Her room is a mess. Her floor is littered with small ripped up pieces of paper. Picking one up, I recognize one of the protagonists of Parfait Girls. The cover is a heavy lemonade card stock and it's ripped in two. There's no way Natsuki was able to tear that in half herself. Not only that, but she had no reason to, either. But I could think of someone who does. 
there's a large bottle of red wine, cap open, lying on its side on her bed. Only a small drip escapes, staining her bedsheet crimson. There can't be much left of it. I knew she'd be drinking, I could tell from the moment she opened the door. Natsuki, you haven't drunk all of that yourself, right? She looks flustered. Of course I have, you dummy! That's a bit much, isn't it? Uh, that doesn't matter. I haven't even finished, anyway. She re retrieves the bottle from her bed. I reach, I reach a hand out to take it from her. Natsuki. Nah, -uh, it's mine! She holds the bottle just out of reach and tries to push me away. She's too weak, however, I simply move her arm aside. Come on, that's enough. <laughs> Mopsa, please? I need this. Something about the way she said that sent a pang of dread through my body. Before I can reach my arm out to stop her this a second time, the remainder of the bottle's contents are gone. Looking at her bed bedside drawer, I see Natsuki's phone. It is overturned, so I can only see her case. The case glittery and pink. This <laughs> drink is not nice, Lapsa. Natsuki, talk to me. I know something's going on with your dad. Please, I just want to help. But I can't if you won't tell me what's going on. This is all the help I need. She collapses onto her bed and giggles. I haven't felt this happy in so, so long. I grow, I grow only more une uneasy hearing that. If this is the land she has to go in order to escape her demon, just how bad is the demon she's trying to escape from? As Natsuki begins to snore, the grip on her wine, wine bottle falters and it rolls off the bed onto her floor. To my, su my surprise, it doesn't shatter. Instead, it rolls under her bed. Shaking my head, I bent down to pick up the bottle that rolled under her bed. Reaching my hand underneath the bed, I can feel the wine bottle. And something else. What the? I pull both from beneath the bed. Placing the wine bottle on the next up right next to Natsuki's phone, I take a look of what I recovered. It's a white container and made of plastic. Wait, this isn't right. This is a bottle of pills. Looking for a description and held sharply as I realize that these are ibuprofen tablets. I look to turn Natsuki fast asleep, fast asleep as, I, as I worried. Oh my fucking god. I desperately check the label on the back of the date of prescription. Two days ago. She's trying to overdose. An icy sweat runs down my forehead as I begin to panic, running my hands through my hair. She stops snoring. I violently shake Natsuki's seemingly lifeless body. Please, Natsuki, please wake up. I grab her hand, it's clammy and much cooler than it should be. I put my ear next to her mouth to check and see if, she, if she's breathing. Thankfully she is, but it's faint. I take her by the shoulder and pull her into a sitting position. I crouch down next to her, sporting her. Natsuki. I contemplate calling an ambulance, but I'm worried that it'll draw too much attention to her house. The hell with it. I don't care what happens so long as she lives. I reach into my pocket and... Fuck. Fuck! My phone isn't there. I reach up onto her bedside table, gripping Natsuki's phone tightly. I bring it to my face and press the power button. The screen lights up, but from behind a shattered display. I try to make a emergency call, but the screen is unresponsive to my touch. Dropping the phone, I pull Natsuki in close to me, 
hoping, praying that she wakes up. I begin to sob terrified for her life, but Natsuki begins to cough erratically. I'm si simultaneously panicked and relieved. She opens her eyes and unsteadily rises to her fern, feet with my assistance. Natsuki, please tell me you're okay. I... I... She falls silent. Jesus! My nose is solved by the mixed sense of bile and wine as it splashes on the floor in front of me. I realize that she's got some on my arm. It, it stings? Well, at least that would have gotten the deadly mixture of her body. But she's still in trouble. Natsuki turns to me, half unconscious bleeding. So help me. She stumbles back, landing in a sitting position on her bed. I don't wanna die. Look at me, okay? You won't. You hear me? I won't let you die. Natsuki, listen to me, okay? I'll be right back. She nods weakly, barely aware of her surroundings. I need to find her something to eat. Hopefully it should upshot what's left of the alcohol. Bolting down the stairs, I reach the kitchen within seconds. I swing on every cupboard I see, along with the refrigerator. Nothing. Not even a slice of bread. When did Natsuki last eat? Exit the kitchen, I look her all around the house. Hurrying back to Natsuki, I check up on her. She's pale as ever, but she's conscious at least. She's, she weakly raises her head to look at me. Hey, hey, Natsuki. I need you to pay attention to me, okay? Just, whatever you do, don't go to sleep, okay? Please. She tries to mutter something, but it's unintelligible. I have no choice but to leave her again. I search everywhere in the house, besides her father's bedroom. As I approach the door, I notice that it's locked. I ram the door multiple times before the frame gives away. Whoa! I tumble on the floor now littered uh, with splinters. I rise to my feet and flick the light on. As I search the room for anything that could possibly aid Natsuki, something catches my eye. A few bags of various restaurants are around town. I tear them open to find nothing but empty takeout containers. I return to Natsuki's room. We have to go, now. Okay. I help her to her feet, wrapping her arm around my shoulder, holding her hand in place. She, she'll make it. I'll make sure of it. Where are we going? Somewhere safe. We make our way down the stairs. I keep Natsuki on her feet, though it is provided to be more difficult as she fades in and out of consciousness. Starvation mixed with alcohol and painkillers. It's clearly taken a toll on her, but she isn't dead. We'll ma we make it to the front door. With time feeling like a lost luxury, I shut it, shut it behind us, moving through the porch. I can feel Natsuki's stare soak through my shirt. We we'll reach the gate and I set her down while I open it. I scoop Natsuki off the grass and close the gate behind us. Holding Natsuki close, I move as fast as I can down the street. As we approach the glow of the street light, I begin to feel relieved. I loosen my grip on Natsuki. Can you walk? Yes. I think... I set her down for a moment. Her knees buckle. Again, I wrap her arm around me and mine around her. Let's go. Okay. I end up supporting her the entire way through town. There's nobody around to call me out for looking suspicious. I'm almost glad she has such a small figure. It certainly makes it so much easier to. That's why she's so small. Her father has been leaving her mal malnour malnourished. Malnourished. Well, I can't talk that. No. A living on fast food. Jesus Christ. Finally, I recognize the familiar view of my house. 
Sorry to spoil the moment, but... It's an emergency. Natsuki is overdosing. Why go to your house when Yuri is a lot closer? I know you don't want to worry Yuri. But in an emergency like that, screw what Yuri is feeling. She is closer to Natsuki than you. You should have just taken her there instead. I set Natsuki down on my front step. I fumbled with my keys for a moment, finally able to unlock the door. I held Natsuki through. She's safe, from her father at least. I bring her to the kitchen and sit her down on one of the chairs. Why did you help me? How did you know where I... Don't worry about that. Don't worry about all that now. Let's just get you settled in for the night. I'm worried that it'll be longer than one night. I have a spare bedroom in my house. She'll be able to sleep there. I search through my pantry and my fridge for something she may like. I decide to just make some toast and chicken noodle soup. Is that chicken noodle? I haven't had that in so long. Her words break my heart. How long? How long has she lived like this? I watch the clock as Natsuki eats. It's late. Now that the immediate panic is over, I realize that poor Natsuki still trends in her own stomach acid. Natsuki, I'm going to need you to get changed. What? Not here, silly. I mean, you can get changed in the spare bedroom. But I don't have any of my clothes. You'll have to borrow some of mine. Okay. But only because I have to. Natsuki seems to be in much better shape after a meal. She stands up on her own accord to return her bowl to the kitchen counter. She moves slowly but deliberately. Despite the sink the stink of bile clogging up my nose, I'm relatively calm too. Natsuki's stin tone has returned to normal. Mostly, she still looks scared by the night's ex uh, experiences. Once she returns empty-handed, I'll ask her to follow me to her room. Come on, I'll show you where it is. Natsuki timidly complies, wrapping her arms around me. But this time, it hurts. And inhales sharply. Are you okay, Lopsa? My shoulder is in pain. The adrenaline of the situation has settled. Maybe barging through that door was a bad idea. You think? You really think that's a bad idea? Yes, it is a bad idea because now it's on the floor in splinters. But when he comes back, he's gonna know something happened. And he knows it's not Natsuki because Natsuki is weak. No offense, Natsuki. Not only because of the pain, but the damage it caused, too. When Natsuki's dad returns to the house... Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I'm alright. Don't worry about me. Let's get you cleaned up. There's a shower in the guest room that you can use. We reached the guest room located across the hall from my own bedroom. I motion towards the edge of the bed. Here, sit down for just a minute. I'll be back with something comfy for you. She sits down. I rush into my bedroom, picking out one of my grey tops and a pair of jeans. When I bring them back to her room, she's struggling to take off her socks. I place her fresh drawers on the bed, uh, bed kneel down to help her take them off. Ooh. She opens her mouth like she wants to say something, but reluctantly lets me help. 
Natsuki has been through too much today. She has next to no strength left. Thanks, Lapsa. I can take it from here. Are you sure? I really don't. All the blood in my body rushes to my face. She's going to have a shower. Why is it about to... Was I about to indirectly tell her I wanted to help? I... Never mind, it's fine. You take your time. I decide not that now isn't the best time to question Natsuki about her family. Instead, she just needs some needs a shooting shower and some sleep. Maybe that will take her mind off tonight's events. Even if only for a few moments. Those few moments would do her a lot of good. As I stand to leave the room, not to be grasp my wrist gently. Lopsa, wait. I wanted to thank you again. Don't mention it, okay? I'm just glad I got there in time. Natsuki stares into my eyes. Me too. How did you know where I was? I walked home with Yuri. She was having a bad day. So I went with her. She pointed out your place. And ever since I saw you at the hospital, you haven't left my mind. That's why I decided to go. I tried calling you God knows how many times, but you never answered. I cast my mind back to Natsuki's wreck of a phone. I guess I know why. I saw every one of your calls. I couldn't answer because of the stupid screen. When all, when all I wanted to do was hear your voice, I couldn't. I just wanted to go back to the club and sit with you under the window. Three more together. Because when we, we do, it's the only time I really feel safe. Well, not anymore. Of course. A bar faker smanka was torn apart. She looks down at the ground dejectedly. I leave Natsuki to sour. After getting changed myself, I sit on the edge of my bed, gripping a volume of parfait girls that I have bought for myself on the weekend. I realized I haven't saved, so I guess I should do that every now and then, actually. The water stops running and I hear the end suite doors being opened and closed. I wait a few months before knocking on her door. That's okay, I have something else for you. Oh, Lopsa? Four dudes? Well, okay, yeah, it kind of seems. It's kind of obvious that it doesn't really fit her. It's too big of clothes, but still, kind of looks nice on Natsuki. Natsuki opens the door, looking healthy again. She is out of her dirty clothes and is now wearing my shirt along with her old pants. The top doesn't fit her well. With fit her very well, though. Huh? This shirt's massive on me. I could get you a smaller top, um, top of mine if you. I like it. You don't need to. You don't need to. Are you sure? Yeah. I present the manga to her. I saw what happened to your copy of Parfait Girls back at your place, so I thought I'd drop my own ego for you. So you can uh, read it if you want. Natsuki gives me a weak but sincere smile. He reaches out to grab the manga. I'd love to. Instead of putting, pulling the manga from my hands as I expected, she grabs my wrist and tries to sit me down on the bed next to her. But only if we read it together. 
It's the least I can do to make her happy. She needs it. So do I, in a way. First having to deal with Sayori and tempting suicide. Now Natsuki? Kawa, how terrible must her home life have been for her to want to escape it like that? Well, I can take a guess, considering the complete lack of food in her house. And her face when I saw her in the hospital. Christ. Uh, hey, Lapsa? What? You just kinda stood there for a second, spacing out. God, you're worse than Sayori sometimes, you know? Hey. I'm sorry, okay? It's fine, I was only teasing, dummy. I know that I shouldn't blame her. She doesn't know about Sayori's condition. And as far as I know, she hadn't seen her. We hadn't seen her at the hospital. Regardless that her... <sighs> Stop yawning for fuck's sake. Regardless that hurt me more than it should have. I move the duvet to the side and sit down next to Natsuki. She pulls the covers over the two of us so we're sitting up with it draped over our laps. We decide to just start the volume over again. Lapsa, you're so warm. Natsuki insists closer to me. We're now in we're now shoulder to shoulder. Natsuki, can you see it okay? Not really. I inch myself down into a lying position. Natsuki joins me. This really is that reading scene, but flipped, and Natsuki is lying down. Much better. My left arm is awkwardly torment between us. I slide it under the pillow and around her. There we go. We continue to read. And she falls asleep, doesn't she? Before I know it, she's fast asleep. Natsuki? I lay there motionless. I dreamt of this moment ever since I really got to know Natsuki. I hate that it had to come due to her circumstances at home, but regardless... I run my fingers through her silky pink hair. I brush her bangs to the side. She looks so peaceful in her sleep. What is this feeling? I feel a lump in my throat. Just the sight of her is enough to make my heart pound. I don't recognize this. My chest is heavy, it feels like there's a way on my ribs. It's hard to breathe. This... This is the happiest moment of my life. As I drop the manga to the side of the bed, not even reading anymore, I drift off to sleep. I'm jerked away by the sound of crying. Confused, I open my eyes and look and turn to look at Natsuki. She is clutching my sleeve of the sleeve of my shirt, holding me tighter than before. She's sobbing into my shirt ferociously. Natsuki, are you? I realize that she's still asleep. Sighing, I lament over Natsuki's nightmares. I'm almost certain they're related to her family, but... I give her a nudge to wake her up. As she seemingly begins to stir, I try to calm her. 
Natsuki is just a dream. You're okay, you're safe. Natsuki opens her eyes. Uh, that... That was more than a dream. What's my dad kill you? I uh, watched him torture you for saving me. He kept telling me this was my punishment for leaving. Lopsa, you shouldn't have helped me. This was wrong. This is wrong. Why? Why? Why'd you have to get involved? I... I can't let you do this. Natsuki jerks away from me. Natsuki. Do you want to know the real reason I showed up at your house? I missed you. I missed reading with you. I missed reading your poems. And after the hospital, I knew something happened. I, I had to make sure you were okay. I was worried sick for days. I felt like I had to. I'd do anything to ensure your safety. I'd gladly be tortured if it meant you'd be, you'd be happy. Anything, Natsuki. Do you understand me? I'll do everything in my power to keep you safe. If my words right now aren't providing, proving what I mean it, maybe this will. I rise to my feet and walk to my room. I flick the light on and rifle through my back. Ah, there it is. You. I don't know what ha what's happened or where have you been. All I can think about is bruises on your skin, the blood on your nose trip, tri tripped onto your clothes. The sight, the sight that broke my mind. For that moment I was frozen in time. I saw you, broken, abused. I knew from there on I would save you. Day turned to night, you on my mind. I've been sick with worry. If, I, if I'm going to do something, I need to hurry. Text after text, call after call, the girl I cared about most is the one I couldn't save after all. I return to the bed, Natsuki turns to face me. I hand her my poem. Natsuki reads, wiping her eyes as she does so. I... Natsuki leaps from her bed and embraces me tightly. I return the gesture, wrapping my arms around her. We stay together for a while, her tears soaking through my shirt once again. After a few minutes, Natsuki eases her grip. I do as well, resting my hands on her waist, hers hanging from my neck. Natsuki lifts herself up onto her tiptoes and pecks me on the cheek. I want to go back to sleep, but I want you to stay with me. I nod wordlessly and Natsuki gently escorts me to the bed. Laying my head on the pillow, she keeps her arm wrapped, arms wrapped around me. We drift into the void of unconsciousness together. <laughs>